Welcome. I'm John Grimsmo, and this is Knife Making Tuesday, week 54. This week we're making tour knives. If you don't know what a tour knife is, that's where we take one of these and turn it into one of these. So when you stand a little bit too close, um, yeah, all those chips kind of fly at you and I just keep on getting pelted in the face, so I'm going to step back and uh, let it do its thing. The blade steel is 5160 spring steel, a very good carbon steel. It's got a good springy properties and good, good edge retention and uh, really good toughness. This is the knife we designed for the Tormac class a couple months ago that we did. Uh, I've got a video on, on that from uh, November. And now we're just finishing up the first big batch that we're doing. We're making about 24, hopefully. So we're getting them, um, some of them are pretty much roughed out. This guy's ready for a deburring and heat treat. And, um, yeah. So we've just been taking some footage of that and going through the process. Um, been having quite a few problems with this pig. Um, a lot of the problems are up here, but a lot of the problems are also, um, you know, goofy mistakes and all that stuff. So one of the unfortunate things about this 5160 steel is that uh, this is the thinnest you can buy it in. This is 0.215 inch. It doesn't come any thinner than that. It comes thicker, but no thinner. And when you're trying to make a knife, my goal here is uh, 156. Um, that's a lot of material to remove. And I was under the impression that I could smoothly pull it off to face this down on my mill, and uh, I can do it, it just doesn't work out perfectly. Um, I've tried a variety of different tools, but if you can see this waviness right in here, this is one of the nicer looking ones. So you can see here how I'm fixturing the blades on the machine. Um, these are called Talon Grip Clamps from Mighty Bite, and these are called Pitbull Clamps. And they're really sweet clamps. They allow me to clamp the blade from the sides and leave the top completely exposed. Um, however, in this context, in this use, it's held here and here, but in the middle it's not held down. So this is where the majority of the vibration happens. Um, and also a little bit on the end here and a little bit over here on the end. So you can see it starts to vibrate and chatter right there. It's pretty good in the middle but then you get a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, lots in the middle and then really good right in here. Um, now some of the blades, I don't know what difference it made, but this one's perfect. A little bit of chatter in the middle and a little bit of chatter at the end, but you know the blade portion is beautiful. If, if it was all like this I'd be super happy. Um, so, <clears throat> obviously once these are finished, I'm going to send them out to get surface ground. I don't have a surface grinder. Um, it's something that would be very welcome in my shop. So maybe one day I'll get one, or when I make that grinder, I'll probably make a surface grinder attachment for it. Um, so that'd be really sweet. But, yeah, um, using these Pitbull style clamps on the blade and leaving this large gap in the middle is just causing more problems than it's worth because I can face this down to 156 here, but down here it's as low as 140. You know, 14, 16 thou lower, um, thinner in the middle, which is completely unacceptable. Um, so, yeah, so next time I make these, I'm gonna have to rethink how I, how I fixture them, or more specifically, um, duh, I'm just gonna buy uh, blade steel it's already the correct thickness as opposed to buying you know something that's possibly more affordable but takes way more work and way more headache um, and the next batch of these that I want to make it, it'll be a few months down the road but I want to make them from stainless so I'll, I'll pick up some sheets of really good I don't know CTS XHP or something like that and um, either buy it precision ground or get it precision ground in big sheets and that's just going to save me so much headache. 
But the cool thing about facing the blades down so much is that you make all these really cool blue chips. We've been having a lot of fun with the, uh, where is it? Right here, the Tormac Superfly Cutter. This thing is just an absolute monster. I already chipped uh, the one side of the end mill, or of the insert, no, two sides. The top corner and this inside corner. So now we've rotated it to the bottom, but it's a good thing I bought ten of them. Yeah, this thing just throws a shower of chips. Um, as you can see, you know, there are little ones all over the floor, but keep going farther and farther. They're all the way out here. Um, they're all the way out here. They're all the way out here. I've even seen some on the bench over here. And you can see how far we, our way we are. And that was with the plastic shield right there. It would bounce up around and come all the way out here. This is probably 15 feet away. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, and I'm wearing, uh, um, representing my Tormac swag. You know, it's a good Columbia fleece sweater. And uh, those blue chips stick and melt into here. And so every time I go inside, I have to be like, oh, yeah, there's one. Oh, yeah, there's one. There's one. Because this is the kind of stuff you don't want inside on the floor for your little children to cut their feet on. Those things are sharp. Another thing that happened is while we were installing these um, talon grip clamps, they use an M5 flathead uh, screw here with I think a 3mm Allen key head. So Eric was installing them this time and we used our uh, drill here with a little insert, hex insert there. Makes it really quick and easy, you know, you set the drill chuck to a uh, loose setting or whatever and you crank them down. I don't know what setting Eric put these to, but it was pretty much He-Man strength because at first he twisted the tip of this. This is actually a smaller one, though. He ended up breaking the one that we were using. Um, not while tightening them, but while trying to undo them because one of the next operations is we have to undo these. So, you know, he puts it in there, tries to undo it, and it just snapped. And lesson learned these do not have to be very tight. These go down flush, they're snug, that's it. And the fixture itself holds them in really good. These pit bull clamps, they can be really tight and they're, they're kind of, they're cam lock, so they, you know, adjust a little bit. But once you get those tight, they're good. But, um, these things are, were ridiculously tight. So then I tried to undo them, and I broke an Allen key. First, I twisted the head, and then it snapped. Um, I had an, an extension, like a little six inch aluminum bar that I extended on that. So that didn't work. So then my own, only thought after that was, well, we gotta drill them out because they won't come out otherwise. So I used my um, 5 16 drill mill here and basically just eyeballed it on the machine and then plunged it down. 
so that it went like this, and then you hear this tiny little tink, and then it comes out. So I'll have to do that for all these other ones that won't come out by themselves. Of course, right now I've got my camera light on, so once I turn that off, this is what we're used to working with. You know, it's still a little light outside, but, um, you know, it's getting pretty dark, and especially once the light goes away, you know, and, and I shadow the light from the roof right now, you can't see anything. So, once we get that light, so I'm probably going to um, install that one over the Tormac, and then buy another one or two, and install them over the benches, because they're going to make an incredible difference. I mean, right now in the shop, all we've got is that one, that one, and that one over the lathe. And that's just not enough. So, these things are cheap, too. They're cheaper than I thought they were. Um, this one's 20 bucks, and then the lights, a pair of lights is 10 bucks. So for 30 bucks, you get amazing lighting. And we'll be getting a couple of them. Another thing we've been working on is the tour handles. So, as you can tell, um, we've got a whole bunch of different colors. These are all G10, with a few micarta ones here. Black micarta and um, brown micarta. But the G10 ones look really cool. So there's yellow, orange, black, toxic green, and I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between these two colors, but they're definitely a little bit different. When I ordered all this from Alpha Knife Supply, they came in chunks like this, cut to the exact size that I requested, and I just said, I don't know what colors I want. Give me a, an assortment of whatever is popular and whatever sells well. Um, the only problem with that is I don't know the difference between these two. <laughs> um, they're both pretty much brown, uh, whether it's coyote brown or whatever. Um, I don't think they're OD green, but maybe some of you guys watching can, can see the color properly. I mean, if you look really close, you can tell that the, the back side looks completely different. This has a more... Um, you know, checkerboard pattern to it, and this is a lot smoother. Other than that, I don't know what's going on, but... But anyway... Love the 3D milling pattern we put on these things. They feel great, they look great. They might look um, aggressive and kind of hurty to your hands, but they're not. They're... They're nice. They're plenty grip enough without, you know, being annoying. And the micarta ones, um, even though they've been oiled already, they've still got that powdery cloth look to them. But they'll break in. And I was just taking some pictures of this guy, so I figured I'd put a bunch of those steel shavings underneath. I don't know why I always have to make that noise whenever I do the sweep. I don't know. That's what I get for being a dad and, you know, doing that to your kids all the time. Well, guys, that's too bright. That's better. Well, guys, so I'm running out of time to uh, film more of this uh, Knife Making Tuesday, being that it's already the Wednesday after the Tuesday I was supposed to post this. Um, slacking off on my video duties here. I might still do a little bit more footage after this, but I figured I would do my outro right now. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and the Tor Knives, um, there's still some space in the pre-order if you're uh, jonesing for one of these, and they should be done within the next, hopefully within the next week, depending on surface grinding, uh, where and how much and how long I can find a shop to do that for me. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing heat treating hopefully over the weekend, in the next like few days and then um, surface grind and then a little bit of hard milling and then sharpen them should be done within a week so if you're interested in one of these just uh, go to the website grimsmoknives.com sign up for our newsletter there and thank you so much for watching when we do heat treating we'll do a specific heat treating video that'll be fun anyway guys thanks bye here's a little something I thought might be a little goofy fun uh, as you can see, all the chips are in different shapes and sizes, so I thought I would separate a few of them so that we can uh, make silly names for them. This one here I like to call the Punisher. It looks best in a cardigan and a pair of slacks. This one here I like to call the Short and Curly. Could have been a bit bluer color. This has a straw color, so it could have been a bit hotter. This one here I like to call the Tornado of Doom. These are the ones that you do not want to hit you in the face because they are so thick and beefy. 
This is what the Superfly, uh, Tormac Superfly cutter throws off. This pair of beauties right here is called the Eyelashes of Doom. Really sweet how they just turned out to look exactly like eyelashes. This one's called the Curly Shirley, and this one's called the Charlie Chaplin.